about this being late. Uh, we weren't here Monday, had to take care of some different things. I'm Melanie. And that silence is way off weird. Look at him. Now he's over here. Yes. I want to be able to see the silence because I got to try to count him. Would you remember if you saw it, though? I saw it. Last week on Doctor Who, we had a cute little stitch looking creature yeah. eating a part of a spaceship going to kill everybody. The pating. So freaking cute. Yes, poutine. Oh, <laughs> no. So we had uh, the spaceship thing there. The syringe. We had them right. trying to survive, which they did. Then I believe they were going to teleport them back to their TARDIS. So mm -hmm. I think we're all good to go wherever we're going to go next. Um, and we met a few more aliens. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, Ryan and Graham got to be doulas. <laughs> My yeah. favorite part. <laughs> the birth of baby from a guy and stuff. So a very interesting episode. Boys give birth to boys, Aaron. With that episode, we also had a lot of... Um, we had like a computer with a bunch of alien information on it. Yeah. And they uh, showed a lot of characters. And we are going to see what you guys thought of our poll where we asked, Hey, what were these things? Not what were these things, but which one was your favorite? Plus the adipose, because we added them. Because they're cute. Um, from this past episode, um, we had 1% tied for the Slitheen and the Zygons. Ooh. Overall, they're just kind of scary, weird creatures and stuff. And <laughs> they're, just, they're just kind of broody people. Um, we then jump up to 2% for the Silurians, okay. which are the lizard people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um... Tied as well with the Santarans, which I like yeah, the Santarans. I like the Santarans. Um, they're Santarans. really cool. Um, three percent went to the Santarans. adipose. Three. Three percent, which lost out to the six percent that went to the Ood. Ooh, I, the Ood storyline is awesome, though. The Ood's are very and good. Sad. Yep, and they talk to the ball. But all of those that we just mentioned lost out to seven percent that said the Patine. <gasps> the Patine. He's so cute. So then from there, we jumped up a good bit yeah. to some of the people's favorite characters. 13% going to... One. That one. The Silas. Um, no. Those are freaky. Yes. I think that's what I voted for because this would be the worst. <laughs> Which, um, interesting with that, these things, I was watching some stuff on them. Um, like, this is a silent... So if you have a lot of them, there's the si silence, and you like put an S in plural it. Oh. The silence itself is like a uh, religion or organization. So you have the silence, and then you have silent that are the creatures, and a lot of them are silence among the silence. <laughs> oh, wow. So, it's, so kind of it's like a common religion among the silence. Well, the silence was like the Madame Kavorian with the eye. And all of them that were against the doctor and stuff, oh. they were members of the silence, and silence will fall. And then a lot of people believe that these guys are just called silence, but the silence is the organization, whereas these guys are called, one of them is a silent, and many of them are silence, S-I-L-E-N-T-S. So is it the religion that makes you forget them, or is it no, this that, race? That's that creature okay. there itself, which they are like, I think they're like silent Monks or silent priests or silent, there's something with them, they're within the organization and stuff, but they're like members of it. But anyway. okay, so then we had 14% for the Cybermen and 46% for the Weeping Angel. So now, one thing that was missing from this list was one of the doctor's greatest enemies, the Daleks. Oh, so with that, I wonder if one will get any Daleks for this new doctor. Um, I feel like almost every doctor on their first season combated the Daleks at some point or another. Eccleston had the Dalek episode, which yeah. was the first time you saw the Daleks. Um, David Tennant's, was it the end of his first season, the Daleks and the Cyber Invasion? Right when he loses Rose? It's been so long hmm. since I've seen those. I am you, you just watched these. I can't remember if it's the his first season or his second season that had Doomsday. It was his first season, so yeah. So oh. David Tennant's first season had um, the two-parter with the Cybermen versus the Daleks. And then if you jump to Series 5, which was the uh, Matt Smith, he had um, Victor the Daleks with uh, Winston Churchill. 
right? Gotcha. So that was way before Souffle Girl. And then... Or is that where he met Souffle Girl? And then in the first season of Peter Capaldi, we had Into the Dalek, where they went inside the Dalek. Yeah, I love that episode. That was so cool. So, as of right now, we're looking at a possible first season of a new Doctor without any Daleks in the season. Yeah. That would be weird. So is that something that we're going to have? And the other point of my point of not having the Daleks on the list is what would have changed on that list given Daleks being on there? And how many people love the Daleks over some of those other creatures? Like the Weeping Angels. Weeping Angels was like 50%. Like Hmm. half the vote. It's very high on the Weeping Angels, which those, as well as the Silence, is and Pating and Adipose. Those are all very new uh, creatures for Doctor Who. Uh, Yeah. All created, I believe, within this first... The, the, the new who. The new who, yeah. Whereas some of the other ones, like the Cybermen and the Silurians and stuff like that, mm-hmm. are older ones from the classic who era. So, All right, guys. Anyway, that's it for our poll. That's it for our opening discussion. Let's jump in and watch some Doctor Who now. I'm too cold. I'm too cold. <laughs> Nadja, these are some letters your father wrote to me when he was away. Don't read the filthy bits. <laughs> <laughs> it must never be fixed. Why not? I don't want to talk about it anymore. No, you please. Well, you gotta give the history of the item. Have you got a time or place? I know she lived in Lahore in the 50s. But other than that... Well, you got time. Was on the watch. It's a risk. Oh, like none of our other trips have ever been risky. Her <laughs> am. for the Death Eye Turtle Army. The Death Eye Turtle Army? Shorthand for a very complicated process which is way beyond your understanding. It's all very much. Only hang around here to be insulted. <laughs> Hello, Graham. No interfering. All right, what's gonna happen? She's gonna come back. Everything her. bad is gonna, gonna happen. Come, it's gonna be like like the future. They come back and it's all messed up. Very pretty. Wow, look at it. Nice. They have gorgeous shots in this series. Yeah, they do. So there's a big deal about her being the first woman, Marion. Big yeah. deal about her being the first woman in the middle. We're gonna take two women back to the that time. Whoa, whoa. Those stenzas? Who is that? I don't know. Umbrian. What for? Friends. We're family friends. friends. But we agree. Ah, uh, okay, get in. But we. But we agreed. We agreed what? No family friends showing up. The wedding. The wedding was gonna be secret. Oh. Uh, secret wedding. Oh, is this her granddad? Maybe they don't know it. I'll be there. Don't you worry. It's for a wedding. We'll be ready. Mm-hmm. That must be their granddad. I'm late. Wolverine's gonna kill me. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, this is not good. <laughs> what? Is it What's this? Hmm. I see here's my thing. Armor. Did this, this, this stuff always happen? You know what I mean? Did it happen because they came here? Or does oh. this always happen because they were always meant to come back here? I know, I know. I don't I do not do this well because I start tripping over my own mind thinking about time travel. Is that her? She's so pretty. Who are they? Are your family on green. <laughs> what? So, yes. She's yeah. so yeah. as far as I do. All the way from England. <laughs> I'm that to yourself right now. Right. What's going on? I can't wait to meet the groom. You already have. Remember me? <laughs> That's her grandfather. You can't be. That's not her grandfather. My baby brother thinks he can do everything Is that... Uh, what? Is that the actual grandfather? She marries the brother, maybe? Shouldn't have come. I'm too nice. This is what happens when you try to be nice. <laughs> Who wants to know what they're listening to in there? Yep, yep. 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 <laughs> I wish they would have changed clothes. What year is it exactly? Same year you have in England. 1947. Partition. We're in the middle of the partition of India. Hmm. You've just put my house in Pakistan. With the other Muslims. But I get you have a hard decision if you're married. (laughs) If you're married. (sighs) That's why she was the first woman married in Pakistan. That makes okay, sense. what are these guys? Whoa. What was that? A different event. I like this. Oh. What are they doing to the old man? 
Has he fought them before or something? What is this substance on his body? Oh, wow. It's just like evaporating off, that's weird. Be careful what you say back there. The wrong word in the wrong moment. You can interfere yourself out of existence. Do you understand? Yeah, that's horrible. What's that? Spaceship? Hatch? It does look like the hatch. Was it four, eight, sixteen, twelve, six, <laughs> fuck, twenty-four, forty-two? Oh! Species data, bio ID. Okay, so what are they? Yeah. What are they? This is a Fajarian knife. Fajarian knife. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You said you'd seen them before. Where? I don't want to talk about that. It could be important. I don't want any of this. Supposed to be married tomorrow. Maybe they're just right. And they're trying to stop your marriage. Oh, he's looking for his friend. Standing over my older brother's dead body. Oh. Oh, that's the necklace he's wearing right now. The monkey thing? Is that what it was? It's not a monkey, I don't. I thought it was like a monkey holding up like a platter or something. Right? I will protect you, all of you. Or if you can't. Or you're not supposed to. Oh, there's that thing. It's true. Taking a look at that. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, they're so fast. <laughs> Confiscated. See ya. Confiscated. <laughs> Where'd they go? I've seen war take our young and drought take our old and weak. Now, men without a clue are imposing a border like a crack through my country. Hmm. Prem is the one certain thing in my life. I love how strong she is. That's awesome. See, she doesn't know the history, so she, you can't interfere, though. You gotta let it yeah. be course, you know? If this is true, if this is her life, then she lied to me. No, she said you have to be older before she, she tells you. Me. She ain't your nan yet. It's only later she'll decide how to tell it. Yeah. That's true. The things we're doing with the doc. We're in 1947. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Happy. Yeah. Still not interfering, are we? Oi, the alien assassin started it. <laughs> a touch of ox bit, a chicken poo, and a biscuit. Chicken poo? Or a biscuit. I love biscuits. She ate a biscuit when she got her tartar. Remember that little, like, cookie thing? <laughs> yeah. Women with me and mum, men over at Prem's house. It's like a bachelor, bachelor party thing going on. Oh, so then they don't see each other until the wedding. Never did this when I was a man. <laughs> Doctor, you any jokes? Yeah, that's right. My references to body and gender regeneration are all in jest. I'm such a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> You're a doctor, right? That's respectable. You could marry us. Don't be oh. ridiculous. I suppose I could. No, doctor. I've never shared your size. Since Einstein. <laughs> that woman not getting involved? <laughs> and these alien assassins, we still don't know who they come for. Yeah, or why they're here, or what, what they're... What happens here? Why did she never tell her family about any of this? She probably didn't want to. It's a bunch of crazy alien stuff. Uh-oh. Oh, crap. Colors. They're getting through it. Oh, oh, no. If you didn't kill the holy man... If you were only honoring his death. How did he die? Heart attack from Manish. walking too much? Maybe it's Manish. Is Manish gonna kill his brother? I don't know. I don't know what happens. We have to go. You gotta leave it. We can't let that happen. It has to. You have to. I want to be sure she's safe whatever happens. I want to look after my nanny. I'm with yours. Well, you can't interact though. You gotta just leave. Savage mobs. And stay strong. Protect yourselves however you must. I wonder if that mob comes out to their house. So much war. <laughs> Nothing worse than when normal people lose their minds. I don't know how we protect people when hatred's coming from all sides. Yeah. All we can strive to be is good men. Hmm. <laughs> No, That's cool. Will you? Yes. They wrap the rope yeah. around their hands, right? Or something like that. Unbreakable bond, right? You kept us fed, Manish. Will you let me feed you? Uh oh. 
I worked it for my brothers. One who didn't come back, and the other I wish hadn't. And what are you doing? The watch. Friend. Is that how it broke? Is that what you used to shoot the holy man? What have you done? Who's coming? <sighs> yep. <sighs> he summoned them because of the, the, the marriage and stuff. Yeah. Oh, look at those horses. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. These are demons I have to face alone. I know what you did to the holy man. There's nothing holy about a man who would approve your union. Better he die than defile himself. I... Really? We will watch over him now. It's not even about him being a threat or anything, it's just... Ridiculous. This is a terrible design. <laughs> <laughs> then you end up in Sheffield, of all places. I love Sheffield. <laughs> really? He gave me your mum. <laughs> and gave me you and your sister. I love you, Nanny. And I love you too, Betty. Aww. Hmm. Some of these episodes... Like, they've been more... They've had their serious tone. A lot less of the sci-fi element to it. Yeah. Um, and more of, like, the educational element to it. Yes. You know? You have this and the Rosa episode and stuff. And it's been more of, like... You know, it's, it's kind of, like, eye-opening to, like, things that have happened in our past. and. Yeah. And it's not, like... They're not choosing safer parts of history, you know? Like, they're no, yeah. choosing, like, the controversial parts of history. Yeah. So it's... Learn from this so you don't make a mistake again, you know? Don't divide a country because of, you know... I, I loved what uh, Prem said about, like, we yeah. fought together, right? His little speech he had, we fought together just to uh, be split apart based on how different we are. And we fought together to learn how similar we are and stuff, you know? Like, yeah, and that, and I don't know how to protect people if hate is coming from all sides. Mm -hmm. So it's just... It's just weird, like, this... Like, this doesn't feel like, you know, the library with David Tennant. Yeah. You know, this doesn't feel like... Like, very sci-fi. It doesn't like feel like said. Doomsday for, with David Tennant. It doesn't feel yeah. like, uh, you know, The Impossible Astronaut with Matt Smith. Like, some of those have very different types of stories. Mm -hmm. And while, like, A Good Man Goes to War has a very serious tone about, you know... Uh, finding, you know, finding Amy, finding the baby, you know, Rory himself. I was going thinking to war more to like, save, like the Ood backstory, that episode. Yeah, very I felt sad. more like that, sad and like very controversial and like, but that's very sci fi -y. That doesn't yeah. really hit home, you know? <clears throat> so much of the, this series, I think, right now has been focusing on like, well, here's where we're going to go. We're going to go to, what, India, 1947, August? When they divided it and the partition, yeah. Now here's India and here's uh, Pakistan. Yeah, it's. I mean, I'm enjoying it because I like the history aspect. So it's good to like re-educate ourselves. The story felt it was a good story. Yeah. I like the story. It just it feels different in the Who setting, but yeah, it's also at the same time interesting because um, I know some of the classical episodes like, had more of a educational standpoint behind them because he did a lot more traveling around, like, the world and stuff like that before it went as super sci-fi, I believe. Yeah, I know, like, I think it's the very first episode. <laughs> like, it was with mummies and everything. It was on Earth, so. Yeah, like, he still fought, like, things like that and dealt with those kind of things and creatures and stuff, but it had more of a historical aspect and was meant to be more educational. And, like, this... This, the Rose episode, some mm -hmm. things like that have been a bit more educational. And we've been on Earth a lot of it. Yeah. Um, we were in a spaceship in that junk planet, right, last episode? 
Yep. Like that was it for that. Um, we were running that then, race. And then the second episode was like a different planet that was deserty and stuff. But everything else, there's been the Stenzel in the first episode. Which was, yeah. Um, the spiders in the third episode, right? Which was still no, in the Rosa. city. Rosa was the third episode. The fourth episode, oh, I think, was spiders, yeah. right? Fourth episode, spiders. Well, fourth episode. Yeah. Fourth episode was the spiders. And then the fifth episode, which was the last one, was the one on space. So, I mean, three mm-hmm. of three of the six. Si- no, four of the six, right? Okay, so. One, two, yeah. One has, is has her been, falling. Four of six episodes have been on Earth. Um, and two of those have been very That's historically based. And, like, here's what Rosa did. And she couldn't sit in a bus because she was different. You know? Here's India, yeah, who's being like, split into two countries because people are different. You know, it's touching on that different aspect. And, like, yeah, everyone's different, but, like... I don't know, it just feels like... And this time it's not really due to race, it's due to religion. The Hindus versus the Muslims. Yeah. So, I don't know, it's just... It's just interesting they have the whole... It's not that the stories are intertwining, you know? No. It's just, here's the story we're telling, here's the story we're telling, and it's touching on the it's historical very, aspects. Like we said before, like, especially with, like, the Rosa episode, um, we were comparing it to Legends, because Legends hits all these... Yeah, but see, Legends, like, touches on those things, but it doesn't do it in, like, a very... Educational? S- <laughs> not so much of an educational or very serious manner all the time, you know? Like, yeah. this was very serious. Mm-hmm. Rosa was very serious. Where, like, they touched on some of that stuff with, like... The Revolutionary slavery War. Slavery and the war and mm-hmm. stuff, and they touched on it with, um... The Civil War, the Revolutionary War, the... Um, they touched on, like, I don't know, other other characters and stuff with uh, uh, but they, they've had George Lucas, Obama, Tolkien yeah. uh, I love whenever they do that. Elvis. It's fun. You know, they've had yeah, they've Elvis. had historical figures and stuff from the timeline and whatnot but like, that's how Rosa felt like a bit more like that but it also felt like how this one is where it's like, here's a historical moment you know, you're gonna you know learn about this and what is the We're actually gonna time. live it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not about, like, there was nothing there was no antagonist of this. There was no villain they were fighting. You know yeah, what I mean? well, other than the brother. Similar but. with Rosa. Um, I mean, they had that one guy who was kind of trying to change time, but she got rid of him. But it wasn't that, then it wasn't that they were fighting a villain. They were just keeping the timeline intact. Whereas here, like, they have to make sure the timeline stays intact. They can't save Prim. What happens has to happen. Yeah. So, or else Yaz will not be born. It, it's going into a... We're traveling through time, and we're learning stuff. We can't affect it. Mm-hmm. And it's just its just different for Doctor Who. Yeah. It, it is, but I'm liking it. Yeah. It's its definitely, like, it has good feels and stuff. The music in this episode was great. Yeah, the love, running. Well, it had a very, like, I don't know, like, maybe like a... Mid-Eastern in, sound? Indian Hindu kind of sound to it, but also, like, the, the last song they had kind of had, like, a modern kind of sound with, like, the... Like vocals that reminded me more of a like of like an India like vocal kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's just it was it's a neat blend of the way like some of the music's been for, it, and it also seemed to really fit with how it felt. Yeah, definitely. I I think it, they've done a marvelous job with all the music and all the episodes. I've, I've and have shots. like Every and shots. shots. So yeah, like stepping out of the TARDIS and looking at the scenery there. So we have, like, uh, camera work and music written down for, like, every episode. And I also really enjoy, I'm glad they went back and talked with her, uh, Nan, you know, Nan. having that wrap-up with that. And I like that she's like, no, I don't need to know, you know, the watch story right now. You know, you can tell me again later when you feel like you're ready to tell me. Because some of it might not have been, she's like, I can't believe she's lying to me. Like, some of it might not have been that she was lying to you, but it was like that she wasn't ready to tell you. That, or she may have gone, like, you just won't believe it because you were there. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't think it was that. I think it's more of like a, um, you know, uh, it's, number one, what happens when I tell you about, here's a watch that was from the first man I married that wasn't your grandfather and I never told you about? And what will that do to the family if they don't know about that story, you know? But, like, I love, I love uh, Yaz, like, 
coming to terms with it, talking about like all the stuff you must have gone through in your history yeah, and your journey. Yeah, I like that. Like you're, you are who you are because of what you've gone through, you know, and I understand if you don't want to tell me right now. But I do hope that the grandma has that conversation with her to have that story about her history um, so that she understands that more and like she can tell her, you know. Otherwise, like, all that's lost. Like, what's this watch? What's the point of it? Yeah. You don't, you don't know. I don't know. I think maybe the comment, like, she gave the watch, and then she's like, uh, I'll tell you the story when you get older. She knows that she's coming back in time. Otherwise, she can't really explain it, right? I don't think she knows that she's coming back in time, babe. I don't think that's, a, I don't think that's what it is. She wouldn't have that memory now in her head of this girl named Yaz that came with uh, two white people. <laughs> Like too. I don't. I don't know. I'm just saying. Like it's, you know, some years ago, just say 50 years ago, of a person that you never met and didn't meet again. 70. Like I, I know that she's gonna remember um, Prem, her mom, and Manish. That were people that she knew that had been there forever. Yeah. But one random person that you met, you might and you never saw again, may not be someone that you remember 50. To 70 years well, later, she remembered you know? her enough to name. Uh, she didn't, probably she didn't no, name she her. didn't name her. So I don't know. So I, I don't think it's that. I, I think the older thing is it's kind of a thing of like I'm not ready to tell this. Don't fix a watch. It's important. Why yeah. is it important? Well, I don't want to tell you right now. Like I said a lot of it could be like if you just found out all of a sudden like uh, one of your parents had been married before they were married to your current parent. You know. Would that change thoughts, opinions, or anything? Why? What happened? You know? Especially in, like, it's a inner relation, inter uh, religion. Yeah, with all the controversy that they had over mm -hmm. that, it's easier to kind of like push it aside and not worry about it, you know? So it's just a very interesting and different story. I also like how it's explaining the history of everything that she told everyone at the beginning. Like, uh. Talk about Sheffield and stuff, and. Well, like, she gave the which one was it the the something with the flower in it saying i was the first woman married in pakistan and then here's this and then we find out she was the first woman married in pakistan yeah well, not they, to your granddad <laughs> once they said about the, the divide happening i was like oh that's how, that's how she got married because that country's just now being partitioned off and stuff so. and then how she ended up in Shatfield. 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 So, like, finding it on the map, and Yaz is like, okay, what's this? Yeah, <laughs> and then just little the things. Little things that just add to, like, what was foreshadowed at the beginning. I love foreshadowing. So I think that was so cool, just seeing it all they pieced together. They didn't They just told you the answer, and then you had to figure out the question. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, do you, do you get what I mean, though? Like, yeah. Like, here's the answers, and, like, now... They the played Jeopardy. Now you need to know how, like, you know... The Sheffield thing is like, like, what's this? Oh, I don't know. It sounds like a magical place. It's like, oh, I wonder if she ever will go to Sheffield. No, we already know she went to Sheffield. Why did she go to Sheffield? Like, because of this. They played Sheffield. You already know she has a broken watch. Why does she have a broken watch? Because of this. So it was just, it was very neat the way it was And the first out. mill and whatever. <laughs> that would have been when she went to Sheffield and stuff, too. So, so it was fun. Um, the thing I thought was interesting, too, is that we have this alien race that is there not to be aggressive and be assassins, because they used to be assassins. They used to be, yeah. Um, and they lost their planet while they were being assassins, and now they go out and they mourn those who have no one to mourn them. So it's interesting, because you had... You have a holy man who was murdered out in the woods with no one around, and they're there mourning his death. And then you have, like, Prim, who died. None of those guys cared about him. They're the ones who killed him. And his wife and brother, you know, he had nobody. The brother left. The wife had left. He's just there. I like that they were like, well, we got to go and mourn this guy here. I don't think it's so much mourning as just witnessing, bearing witness from the other perspective versus no, they, the murderer they, side. They, they're, they're there to honor the, the fallen. It's like they, they're there to mourn their loss, to honor mm -hmm. their loss, to. They're there like for those, honor and witness because we're yeah. here to witness only. Yes, yeah. which is the mourning. They're not touching them and burying them. No. They're there to, no one else is here for this person. We're here for them to mourn them because they have no one else. And I just think it's very interesting to go from assassin, where we killed everybody, to yeah. now we we go to where the dead are, and at least there's someone there for them mm -hmm. after their death. I just think it's an interesting concept. Yeah. They weren't even there for 
they weren't there as a villain or anything. They were just there. Yeah, they were like, just they were there. Always, they were always there, you know? Even though they seem very menacing. Like, especially finding, like, that purple dust on the um, uh, religious guy and, like, just the zipping in and zipping out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they seem very menacing, but the, they... The, the uh, weird thing is, like, some of the stuff, like... Why were they on Kumal? Was that his name? The brothers? The older brother's body? I don't get why they were on him. Because, sure, he died. But then his brother was coming back to find him. And he would have found him. But he just found him with those guys there. Because they were there to witness his death. The actual shooting. I don't think they're there to... That's what he no, said. No, They're okay. not there to witness every death in history. The ones that have not been witnessed. I don't think they're there to witness a death that wasn't witnessed. So I mean, then they, they are don't there. die alone. Like they were they saying, weren't. they're there to witness. It's not so they don't die alone. I don't think. Not alone. Right? Like they're not there by their side. But remember, they were talking about their planet, and that they were too late to get back to see it happen. So they died all unwitnessed. There was no one to see the explosion of the planet. So they're to, there to watch everybody die that didn't get watched to die. So basically, so why were they there then for Perm, uh, Prim? Because the only other people that saw the murder were the murderers. Yeah, but so someone they needed was there to someone from die, right? the other side. I don't know. So then they can show the history and what happened. I feel like they're there for the people that die that have no one there for them. There's no one there to honor their death. There's no one there to mourn their death. Which prim makes sense. Because the brother had forsaken him, mm-hmm. and the guys who killed him would not have cared. They were there, they watched him die, they left. But now no one's there to actually honor their death, and they're there for that. Which By honoring it and putting it in there. Whereas Kum, Kumal, was that his name? His brother. I didn't write it down. It's with a K. Um, Come he, on. he died. His brother... Uh, Prim was coming back and would have found him mm-hmm. and then would have, you know, mourned him and honored his death and everything. So I feel like for them to be there didn't make much sense. But if we're doing it the other way around where they have to be there when no one's there to witness it, they would have died. He probably died and no one was there when he died. But Prim, those guys would have been there when he died. You know what I mean? So I feel like one of those shouldn't have been there for those alien guys. Yeah, that's why I was confused with them going to shoot Prim there at the end. But, I mean, if you were doing it your route, the holy man, his brother was there to shoot the holy man. Like, mm-hmm. so he was there. That's not my route. My route is that now. he was dying with no one to honor him, which I don't think they would have found otherwise if it wouldn't have been for the doctor and them going out there trying to figure yeah. out. They were following a signal, remember? And then they mm-hmm. found him. I think they wouldn't have been going out there. That guy would have just been out there and no one would have found him. So they were there in that situation to honor his death. Not because he died alone, because he was killed by the brother, but because he died with nobody there to honor him. So it would be the same thing with Kumal. Or I don't know. That one just Kumal. seems different because you had the brother coming back. And yeah, he but would have it's tried. the same situation. They wouldn't have known that he was No, he back. would have. He was... He was literally going back to find his brother. And when he found his brother, those guys were on top of him. If those guys wouldn't have been there on top of him, he still would have found his brother and then honored his death. Well, same thing as the holy man. No one was going to find the holy man. The only reason they were going to find the holy man was because of the sonic screwdriver. They were following a signal. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for the doctor, they would not have found the holy man. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, same thing with his brother. His brother didn't have to come back trying to look for him. But he was in the timeline, in history. He's going back to find his brother. Well, if we're doing in in history, now that we've altered the timeline and we have these people from the future back here, it's now in that history. Yeah, but they, they travel through time too, right? Yes. In the timeline, the doctor and them aren't supposed to be there. So no one finds this guy. Historically, this guy's left in the woods dead alone without anyone finding him because the doctor's the reason they found him. Kumal would have been found by his brother historically because the brother went back to physically find him. Prim was left there dead with no one there to find him because no one was wanting him or after him. So I feel like Kumal, out of all of those, has at least someone coming for him, whereas the other two did not as far as for the honor of them. That's what I think. 
Okay. They even said it's their mission to witness unseen deaths. Witness unseen deaths? Deaths that have been unseen, unwitnessed, and unglorified or something. I don't know. Hmm. It was their spiel. I don't know. So, I mean... It's a very different alien race. It is, and I like them. I like their backstory. Like, uh, the fact that they were an ancient species and they used to be assassins. And now they're going around and doing this as, like, like you said, as an honoring. Like... It's like a... What's the word? A redemption story. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. It's it's like them trying to... make up for what they did before and the loss of their race and everything. Yeah, like the fact that they used to go out and be assassins and then, like, their planet got assassin, assassinized, I don't know. Assassinated. <laughs> assassinated. <laughs> and... <laughs> assassinized? I don't know. It exploded, Aaron. It exploded. All right. But since that happened to them, hmm. like you said, they're making amends. They're, you know, doing this, and it's wonderful. They're now peaceful. I uh, like that little... Redemption. Uh, they also have like that weird like spider eye face thing. Like, yeah. They have like a helmet thing too, right? Wasn't there like a helmet they wore? Because I didn't see all those eyeballs every time, right? I. Or was it just? Did they not have it? Maybe they just have a weird. They have a weird head. I don't helmet. think they showed their top of their face every time. I felt like that's we one saw point. armor. I thought in the beginning they had some kind of helmet thing, and then and a few times when they're like, especially in the ship, they just saw like all these eyeballs and stuff. At the beginning, like, we only saw shoulders and armor and stuff, and then they were very far away, and you probably wouldn't be able to tell if it was a helmet or not. So I don't remember a helmet specifically. Okay. I wish we would have seen the Death Eye Turtle Army. Yeah. I have that written down, too. (laughs) I love that. I'm like, what the crap is that? So sad. All right, I'm good. You all good? Mm -hmm. You want to go into our Q&A segments? Yep. Join our Q&As by doing hashtag who Q&A at BlindWaveProd on Twitter. Make sure you look, too, because we also try to put out a little tweet to remind everybody, hey, we're taking our Q&As. So uh, you can enter those. We have, like, four episodes left or something like that. So make sure you guys enter in your Q&As, and we will talk about those for the rest of the episodes. Mick says, emotion of the episode really got me. Thoughts on a story about alien watchers slash witnesses to the Fallen, set during the partition of India, which aired here on Remembrance Day, Sunday. Love oh, in all wow. forms is the most powerful weapon we have. Hashtag let's, lest we forget. So this is set on, a, on Remembrance Day. Okay. On the, whenever it came out. All right, Mick. Well, thank you. Nice. Um, it's very... Uh, the thoughts on the aliens, we kind of discussed those for a good bit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely different. Um, and I like the idea of having, like... They're, they're, yeah, they're watchers. They're just there to do, you know, do things that, you know, these people have nobody and we're here for at least those people since no one was there for our planet, you know? Yeah. Jeffrey says, if you discovered demons, what would you be thinking? I'm moving. <laughs> I'm moving. Ryan Hicks says, the writer of this episode had only ever written one other episode of anything for TV. And this was also the first episode not written by Chibnall. Could you notice a difference? I don't feel like I really noticed a difference. Um, Comparing it to in Rosa. The writing. Like the Rosa one felt like, yeah, like this. Like they both mm-hmm. had emotional impact on historical moments. And it just seems like, it seemed like it matched with the series. It didn't feel like it was like a big difference. What did you think? Yeah, especially since we haven't been having that um, high stress level, the high threat level. Seems like it fit right in with the series. Hmm. But I think that he did an exceptional job with the aliens. Yeah. Because I love the backstory. I loved how it was set up, uh, the whole story, like, with Graham, Nan, telling the kids and then seeing it happen and then, you know, following through. It was awesome. Yeah. Only one other episode for TV? One TV episode. It didn't even say Doctor Who, just TV episode, so. It's a good job. Um, I liked it. (laughs) Dr. Winchester says, would you want to visit your grandparents when they were your age, or would you be scared you might unborn yourself? (laughs) Yeah, definitely. It would be interesting, especially in my... uh, Just turned 30. (laughs) Um, My grandfather would have still been at war, 
Um, yeah, I was thinking about both my, sides. my uh, Grandpa Elliot. Like, it would be hard, too, because you have to not interact with it, right? Yep. Like, you can't, inter- you can't intermingle with what's going on there. Um, like, my grandfather would have been in World War II. Um, somewhere in that vicinity, I suppose. But he, uh, he, he was a radio operator on a bomber, and it went down, and he was on the plane when it went down. Oh, and wow. everyone jumped out thinking he was dead. Like, they were abandoning ship, and they just left him there because him and another gunner had both... Well, a, there was a gunner who was in it, and I think he got shot, and then it was my grandpa's job to get in there as well. Mm-hmm. So he was there, and then they got hit hard and were going down, and he had gotten hit with shrapnel in his head, and they thought that he had died. So they left him, and everyone jumped, and then the plane crashed, and he survived the shrapnel on his head, and the crashing of the plane. <laughs> That's insane. But it'd be crazy to be there and be like, well, I gotta help him. It's like, well, am I supposed to help him? Like, wh- what do I do? Yeah, especially... I mean, he does live through it, you know, but like... How did he live? Were you there before and you... That's how he lived? Is that yeah. this... and if... Does that... Does that moment, if I, if I helped him in that moment, would it change what happens and, like, would there be less... You know, does he have less kids? My my dad's never born, then I'm never born or something, you know? It'd be <laughs> crazy. It'd be neat to be able to w- be like the watchers and go back and watch. Yeah. Stuff. Just be like a fly on the wall. Yeah. Be neat. Andy says, I'm loving the focus on love and hate this season. The theme was in 12's final episode, speech to his next regeneration. Remember, hate is always foolish and love is always wise. Always try to be nice and never fail to be kind. Huh. Laugh hard. Run fast, be kind. Huh, Last words of the of the twelfth doctor. Yeah. So. Oh wow! I never made that connection. That's pretty cool. Isaac says, "Would you have rather have had ex assassins be the villains of this episode, or were you okay with what we had?" I loved what we ended up having, like because I thought that they were, mm-hmm. and then they weren't. <laughs> it's, it's always so weird because like you always have the doctor. Like Pompey had a very serious episode. That was a thing about like look what happened here with Pompey. Yeah. But the doctor always came back and caused Pompey because he had to stop these evil aliens. Aliens happened to be there, and that's why Pompey erupted and all that. In this one, it's not about like well the doctor always had to be here so that this happened so that Prem always died or anything. If she wasn't there, those were there. This is just, they just happened to come here and witness some stuff that was going on and had to leave. Yeah. And it was done very well, I think. All right, Melanie, this one's Red Claw. Do you think Yaz's grandmother knew that her granddaughter would visit her in the past and that's why she gave her the watch? This is, this is your kind of theory stuff, right? This yep. Is, I'm going to say no. I don't think that's what it is. I don't think she remembers Yaz in there. Many years ago, one random person never met again before didn't name her granddaughter Yaz. No, but she may have told her daughter, oh, made me think of the name Yasmin. I know. Because that, that, what else would Yaz be short for, you know? (laughs) So, yeah, that's what I thought, too. He doesn't agree. Dobby says, I really like your current intro and thumbnails. Cool. Uh, Really whoish, positive, and bright. Well, thank you, Dobby. Um... Yaz's reason to travel felt weak to me. It would have made more sense if we saw them during several episodes or she just had just died. But she was strangely invested in an old story. I mean, she just felt like her grandmother wasn't telling everything and she really wanted to know, right? Mm-hmm. Just wanted to know the history of her grandmother, so. And traveling with the doctor, what bad stuff can happen, you know? Like, let's go ahead. Something bad happens, we'll, we'll do it again. <laughs> um, but Dobby does say this monster is probably the most pleasant design I've seen for this new doctor. But they really need to change their clothing style if they want to not scare people. I know exactly what I said. You can change your clothes on the TARDIS. Why don't you change your clothes? Um, Unless it's like psychic paper. Now they have psychic clothes. Just passing by says, do you feel the doctor is getting enough attention? I don't feel like she's anywhere near as interesting as previous incarnations. Also, while I loved this episode as a piece of television, I wouldn't say it was a good Doctor Who episode, personally. Um, That's kind of what I was saying about, like, I really enjoyed the episode we had. It felt very, like, an educational piece, very uh, communicative over, like, people being people and not, like, well, we're not people. Like, these people are different, these people are different, so we gotta split up. No, we're just people. 
I think the issue with like there's not enough focus on the doctor comes from having also three companions that are running around with her. Yeah. So you have so much time because then the the other issue you have is like okay well we have here's an episode we have. Um, what did Ryan do this episode? Well, not a whole lot. He was kind of backseat. Yeah. The doctor is the vessel for these companions to go and do these weird adventures, and a lot of it isn't focused on the doctor themselves. Yeah, because this was a very Yaz story, which it should be. It's her nan, you mm-hmm. know? So there was a lot of Yaz time, and I felt like it was equally shared mm-hmm. but, amongst the doctor and the three companions. And we've had a lot of doctor stories. I know a lot of people, I, know, I mean, people watch Doctor Who for the doctor, I'm sure you know. Oh, yeah. But we've had a lot of doctor stories in um, Husbands of River Song. A lot of Peter Capaldi's final season was the doctor's story based on things for him, um, Missy, you know, who he is, what the doctor stands for, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Very focused on him for all of that, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, Matt Smith, David Tennant both had very doctor-heavy stories within them where it wasn't so much about, like, their companion, whereas this season really kind of focuses on, like, these three companions who are very different and what their thoughts are traveling with the doctor. Um, you know, I think Graham had some kind of line in this episode talking about, like, uh, was talking with, was it Ryan or Yaz? I think it was with Yaz. But, like, we're traveling with a doctor. We're in 1947. He's like, yeah, who would believe us? Yeah. And it's, it's kind of like, you know, what would you do if you were in this this boat? So it's, the focus for this series has kind of not been on the doctor and who she is, which maybe will be kind of like, we're setting the stage maybe for next season to go into maybe more of a personal Doctor Who story. But we've touched maybe. on so much of Master, Gallifrey, yeah. um, you know, so many things like that to where, like, we're kind of getting the feel of who the Doctor has been and what he's gone through. And now it's more of getting to, like, here are these journeys we're taking with these companions and where they're going and what, what we're doing with them. I mean, all of them have had very personal stories for all of them, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's definitely been a Team uh, TARDIS-type series versus Doctor series. But I've been okay with it. (laughs) Um, Gibbsy says, How do you feel about the amount of Sonic being used as series? The episode in particular felt like she was whipping it out every 30 seconds. I think she kept (laughs) whipping... She kept whipping it out every 30 seconds. Um, because, like, it kept failing. You know, um, like, she kept trying and trying. It wasn't answering the question that she needed. She did use it to try to track and find information. Um, the ship was, yeah, she was trying to get, and it wasn't working, so she kept trying things, so. And then she had to go analog, and I love that. I love that she found different means to um, overcome the, uh, the Sonic method. This up. Sonic screwdriver, this series, has been the most worthless piece of equipment she's had. <laughs> Or that the Doctor has had in a Sonic in the entire series, I think. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the Sonic has solved every problem they've ever had. And in this season, I feel like it's been like, okay, let me do this. Oh, it's not doing anything. I don't know who they are. Let me use this. Here we go. I got a signature. I'm going to track it. I'm going to track the signature. All right, let me use this. I don't know how we're going to get in. Oh, it let us in. Okay, let me do this. It's not working. It's not working. Oh, something turned on. Oh, what's this? See, I like that, though. It's It's not a simple solution anymore. Yeah. A lot of it's been about... It's been a a means to an end to get her somewhere, but it's not been a solution. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And usually they had to, like, kind of do something with their sonic screwdriver so that they didn't have it because that was a solution to everything. Now it's just kind of like, well, she made it, and it's kind of wonky, and sometimes it works. (laughs) But, yeah, I like it. I, I like the fact that... It may be out a lot more, but I like that for it being a who aspect. But I also like the fact that she has to find other means. Like, she's discovering new ways to get around this. So I I like the usage of the Sonic this season. Okay. Um, And then Fibbing Sherlock, you're a dark, I don't know what the rest of it is, says, Do you guys think it was the Stinza? That destroyed the Vajarians' home world. I can see that being another um, assassin race. I think it was. Th- I think they're Thijarians. Um, but anyway, yes. Um, well, the, they had a, them as a race as a Thijarian, but I think they called themselves uh, the Jar. 
Vijar? Th- or th- yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think it's oh. Vijar. What did you say before? Th- he, th- anyway. Oh, sorry. So, um, we had episode two where that one lady said that her whole race was being wiped out by the Stenza, right? Yep. Maybe it could be a, a common thing. Races are being knocked out by Stenza. Yeah. Maybe they could come back as the big bad for the final episode. Especially if they can wipe out a whole planet. Yeah. I've heard some people saying that, like, this season, the the, the story was that there wasn't going to be any, like, big arcs or anything like that. It was going to be very, like, here's a self-contained story, here's a self-contained story. But even still, I don't think that stops them from being like, okay, well, here's the sins of the first episode. Here's some nods to things throughout. Here's, you know, the sins on the last episode. Yeah. So, and all those could be self-contained stories. Uh, but saying that there's no arcs and stuff, the first episode ended with them in space. Now, while it wasn't a direct, you know, arc of, like, this story isn't completed, here we are into the next part of it, it was a, uh, what happens now, here we go, yeah. okay, now here, and that's how it ended, you know? Out in space, still looking for the TARDIS, and then yeah. you end up ending with finding the TARDIS. Yeah. So, so like art for finding the both, TARDIS. Both episodes had their own contained story, but it still had that, like, oh, my God, what are they doing in space? Yeah. But it wasn't like, here comes the climax, to be continued, see you next time. Yeah. So. so we have a lot of intertwining going on, which is, like, quiet intertwining. It's not yes. like, knock, 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 who's on the other side of that door? Yeah. So... All right, um, I'm going to end the last Q&A here uh, with a question, and maybe it might lead us into a poll, but it says, uh, Rebecca, I really love the Doctor in this episode, and I think it was a bit of a return to the Doctor Who format of adventure for each episode. Hmm. What did you think? I feel like it's done... This Okay, it's really weird, because watching this and watching the other Who series each week uh, with the other guys, they definitely feel very different. Um... Production value for one's very different. Um, the the music on both is good for different reasons and stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, this series just has a very different feel than like what we're going through with Matt Smith right now. Um, the Matt Smith into Peter Capaldi, Peter Capaldi himself, I wasn't feeling right away, but it still felt like Doctor Who with the adventures and stuff they were doing. Yeah. Whereas this one, not only do I have a new Doctor, but I have a different feel of the way the stories are being told. And it, it is very different. But it's not that I'm not enjoying it. It's just like sometimes I'm like, am I watching Doctor Who? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I get that too. Like, I'm liking this series so far. Um, but like you said, it's not, it doesn't scream Doctor Who. Like, there's the TARDIS, there's the sonic screwdriver, um, there's all these alien species. But it's not like the traditional Doctor Who that we've mm-hmm. been watching for er, 10 years. So with that, we're done with the Q&As for now. We're going to have a poll, and I'm going to ask you guys, what are you guys thinking about Series 11? Have you been enjoying it, or have you not been enjoying it? Um, hmm. I'm not going to have a meh kind of option where you're just like, well, it's all right, it's not okay. Either either you're, you're liking it, and that's why you're watching it, or it's like, well, I've not been enjoying it, and maybe I don't want to watch it anymore. I feel like you're kind of in those two boats. Um, even the Met option is kind of like, it's all right, but, I, you know, you like it. You're more on the side of liking it with that, I feel. So I want you guys to let us know on if you're liking the series, if you're not liking the series, and then tell us in the comments. But try to keep them kind of short. Don't leave the big books because usually <laughs> I don't read all those because I don't read. Um, <laughs> and I can I can do some of the shorter stuff. Keep the bullet points a bit so that I can go through real quick because I don't want to stay stuck on one person too long. Yeah. And I want to touch on a many of you guys as I can. I also feel like that's weird. an unfair pull because like we won't know until the series is over. Like cuz if they've been intertwining things on purpose. True, it but could it's, feel it's, and you think I'm back not, and go that I'm feels going, very Doctor I'm not Hewish. saying I'm not saying like do you I'm just I'm based on this right now. We've had very different feeling episodes. The feel of it and stuff and how people are liking it regardless of like how it ends cuz this may end with one of the best season finales I've ever seen in Doctor Who. I don't know that yet. Right now I'm still liking Doctor Who and I want to know if people are still liking Doctor Who and why or if people aren't liking it and why. So are people not liking this kind of new feel that you're having with like this episode here was a great episode, but even yeah. some of our Q&A said it didn't really feel like Doctor Who. 
but I really like the episode. Mm-hmm. So I want to I want to kind of dive into that, and I think the poll itself is like a vessel to really diving into the comments is what I'm really interested in and what you guys are thinking about. Like, I'm really enjoying how it's going now. I kind of wish it would go back to the old way. Yeah. You know, and what people are thinking. So what do, what do you think? I'm loving it so far. I love the fact that we're mixing history with aliens, mm-hmm. and it makes it a lot of fun. Um, one of my favorite TV shows is Legends, mm-hmm. and it's given that Legends vibe. So I enjoy that, but... It still doesn't feel like traditional Doctor Who, gotcha. but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, um, I'm almost. I almost feel like this season has almost had too serious of a feel, and I'm missing those little bits of like fun, cool stuff. You know what I mean? Like last episode, the Patin. I was really excited. It's like, oh, look at this cool new alien. <laughs> But, like, every other thing that we've had hasn't really had me excited. The the, the uh, spiders I didn't care about. Um, these guys here were kind of cool, but they weren't really, like, threatening. They weren't something that we had to worry about. Um, Rosa was just a random guy who just was in jail, and he got out and just couldn't hurt people, and he wanted to do stuff that was bad, you know? So, like, I'm just... I feel like there's something more I'm needing, and I'm wanting to know what it is. But I'm still really enjoying the episodes. So I'm really interested on seeing where it continues and where it goes and stuff. So I'm not like I'm, I'm jumping ship, yeah. you know. Jump but ship. it does feel very different, especially when I'm going back watching those other episodes. So Yeah, definitely. So guys, uh, go to the poll. Make sure you vote, but make sure you leave a comment because I want to try to dive into the discussion and see, like, mainly what are you guys really feeling about this, uh, this series so far? And how these episodes have been. Because there's been some really good episodes. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like it's felt very different with this new uh, showrunner. Chibnall, right? So, go to their patreon.com slash blindwave. Let us know what you guys are thinking. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any Doctor Who stuff coming out. We have it at least twice a week right now with this and the other catch-up series. And go to Patreon. You can find early access of next week's Doctor Who episode for the other series and our poll for this week. (sighs) Lots of stuff.